Martin Popoff here from The Contrarians with another solo show. Now, I know you guys are sick and tired of us doing Taylor Swift shows all the time, uh, but there is some big news in the Taylor Swift world. She's got a new album out called uh, The Tortured Poets Department. Um, this is my review of it. Um, so, yeah, I've uh, I've never heard a Taylor Swift song in my life. I guess this person does not get played on the radio. But anyways, um, there's a lot of talk about this new album uh, by uh, Taylor Swift. Um Having lived with this album over the course of about 80 to 100 one second to six second clicks on each and every song, um, you know, I guess at this point I've played this record, I would say a good tenth of a time. Um, and here's my review. Um, here's a funny thing, you know, people people know that pop, you know, I, I remember having Kirk Hammett told me this once and it always stuck in my head. And then it's like, I, I couldn't get this out of my head. And, uh, and it's, it happened to me all the time kind of moving forward, but, or I knew it was happening anyways. What I'm trying to say is Kirk told me once that pop made him angry. And, uh, I, I totally agree. Uh, I get into like a drugstore or a, or a grocery store and I'm listening to that music over, over the PA and I have to get out of there fast because by the time I get to the end of it, I'm like in a rage. I hate today's pop music so much. Right. Um, I can't stand any of that stuff. It drives me crazy. Um, so Taylor Swift, where does this fit in here? So, so the funny thing is, um, so I'm playing this record, uh, you know, and I probably played it twice as long as I normally would have, because I'm looking on the wiki page and I guess, I guess this is like a double album or one album or two albums. And the second part's got this ridiculous name in it or, or word in it, the anthology, which threw me for a loop and it was making me mad. So I'm listening to this album. Um, but I gather the second half is seems to be different than the first half, I suppose. Uh, I don't know how this works or how this comes out, how even physical, uh, you know, media even works anymore. Is this going to be three records, four records, two CDs? I don't know what it is. Anyways, um, the point of this is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going through this record, um, you know, and essentially, so I, I guess there's nothing today's pop about this, or maybe there is a bunch of artists out there. I don't know that sound like this, but to me, to me, um, there's every single song on this album seems like something i would totally like and 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 nothing is offensive to me nothing nothing sort of drove me crazy nothing drove me out of the shoppers drug mart kind of thing uh like i say i've never heard a taylor swift song before uh, i've heard of taylor swift because i'm a long-suffering buffalo bills fan um but uh yeah so so i thought i'd kind of go through this and say well yeah, it's a really long album it reminds me of use your illusion guns and roses right so here's the here's the thing as as i was playing the first half um you know we've been talking on this channel a lot about uh genesis and genesis genesis and i'm working on a, a two-part genesis panel book right um and i've said to to, to various people uh, i could never get it out of my head ever um that the Genesis Genesis self-titled album to me sounds like an acoustic album, uh, but but acoustic meaning it's uh, it's vocals and synthesizer, right? And as I'm playing the whole first half of this, it reminded me of Genesis Genesis. It was like it was like this is really uncluttered, um, well done. It reminded me of kind of smart higher end really uncluttered quiet genesis and even the more commercial side of peter gabriel uh you know it the wiki the wiki page calls taylor swift or calls this album anyway synth pop right and it doesn't sound like any synth pop that would bother me i mean i don't even like synth pop from the 80s right um but so i'm listening to this and it's it's definitely not today's up tempo grating annoying what would you call it? R R and B tinged uh, pop, because uh, there's no R and B to this, right? Uh, I don't think. I mean, I I saw those. You you see those pictures of Taylor Swift concerts, and it doesn't seem like these songs would be would be those uh, those up tempo celebratory songs kind of thing. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, so so as I went through the first part, I, all I could think of was was that that idea of genesis genesis and then it reminded me of like um 
Hounds, Hounds of Love kind of Kate Bush, right? Um, so so that really nice early use of uh, Lindrum and Fairlight uh, that you get on there. I don't know what what any of this is. I'll, although I, I got to say as well, um, there's enough going on that that it felt like um, it was like a production tour de force, but still uncluttered and not way too many things to listen to and not braying and noisy kind of thing, right? So I can understand why, um, you know, it's really grating obviously listening to an old rock guy talk about this. And I can tell you that for a fact, because I, I watched yesterday uh, Piers Morgan and Matt Walsh and Matt Walsh did his usual Taylor Swift's bad for society. And, and Piers happens, I guess he has a couple of daughters and uh, he happens to really like Taylor Swift. I mean, I don't know what that means. Right. Um, but really appreciates what she does and all this stuff and finds her great and an icon and all this sort of thing. I mean, he didn't really say, Oh, I, I, you know, know all the records or anything like that, but so yeah, it's super annoying hearing me or Piers Morgan talk about this, this kind of stuff. Right. But uh, so, so here's, so that, so that's the funny thing. I, I I'm playing this, this whole first half of this and, uh, and thinking this is, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of the latest Peter Gabriel, right? Because the latest Peter Gabriel, it's, it's really cool. And as I, as I learned to live, live with it a little more, um, I'm, I'm loving it uh, more so for the lyrics than for the music, because the music on that latest Peter Gabriel is a little bit, uh, is a little bit, uh, maudlin mainstreamy corporate, um, you know, out there participating in the commercial world sort of thing. It's, it's, it, it's like, he's using all those components that he innovated back on melt and security. And then, uh, and, but now he's, he's using them for, for good rather than evil kind of thing. Right. And, and to me, uh, if this is synth pop, I mean, count me in because I'm, I'm loving everything I'm hearing on this. Now you get to the second half, and I guess I guess I, there's probably a reason for this, but I, to me it sounded like there's there's way more uh, just acoustic instruments and stuff and piano and acoustic guitar and all that. And so so now we're into folk. So I gather this person, this Taylor Swift person, came from a uh, country folk background, and uh, and you obviously hear that here. And and I'm I'm thinking, uh, you know, it's reminding me of like Kate Nana McGarrigle. It's reminding me of, of remember the big uh, the big uh, you know uh craze over Suzanne Vega and Luca and all that reminds me of that right uh her vocals so so the the thing about the vocals the vocals are really high up in the mix in all of this you can't you can't escape the fact that this is a vocals album and apparently a lyrics album too I don't know anything about the lyrics but um but yeah it's a it's a huge vocals album and you know when you listen to her sing it, you can tell she comes from a massive world and a folk world. And is it a new country world? You hear a little bit of new country vocal phrasings and vocal melodies in there. And that's grating too. I mean, you know, a lot of that new country stuff was incredibly, incredibly grating, you know, as manifested in Nickelback, right? Um, so you do hear a little bit of that in here, but fortunately I hear more, way more folk, right? So to me, it just sounds like, good mellow girly girly sort of music right i mean would i ever listen to this uh you know how many more times am i going to listen to maybe i'm going to become a fan or something but uh you know like i say i'm i'm a good i'm a good tenth or an eighth of an album into uh having heard taylor swift now and never never having heard anywhere close to a full song um but uh but yeah this is but you know if if i'm going to listen to to this you know we've been having this discussion recently all about um, uh, discovering new music and the whole, we did a whole Contrarians episode on the idea of um, uh, a lot of us, uh, if we're going to go listen to new music, we'll listen to new, we'll go find new old music that we know nothing about, right? So, you know, I've, I've typed people back and having these debates uh, lately saying, you know, don't, don't recommend a new album to me uh, because there are 29 Peter Hamill solo albums waiting for me to hear, right? So that sort of idea, there are, there are probably two or 300 bands of people who I think are absolute rock gods, icons um, that have these massive catalogs that I, I could see myself just immersing myself in for two weeks at a time and learning you know loving that stuff right um so my point is is uh is this this is like uh this taylor swift person is this new artist uh idea 
And although literally I went through this entire album, 31 songs, and I'm liking or loving all of it. Um, I can't see, you know, if I'm going to listen to stuff like this, I'll listen to these trails. I'll listen. Yeah, I love that. These trails album, right? Anybody doesn't know that should check that, that album out. It's a 1973 Hawaiian indie kind of thing. Right. Um, they only made one album, but I'll listen to that. I'll listen to Kate Bush. Right. I mean, there's, I, I barely even know what, what is that album? The red shoes. And the, there's, there's two out sensual world. I barely even know those albums. Right. Um, so, so it's like, even with Kate Bush, there's stuff that, that I would just, I would, I would just go play those records instead of this new Taylor Swift album. Right. Um, so, so it's, or I'll go listen to X, right. I'll listen to X scene surveying or whatever. Although that's not particularly girly girl, but uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, so that's, uh, that's my review. Uh, pretty interesting. Um, if, uh, if this is pop um, it's, it's really cool. I, I could see listening to anything on this album, including, like I say, the, the stuff that is really to me, I mean, like I say, I've, I've only played each song about, one one hundredth or one fiftieth of a time, right? <laughs> so, uh, but you know, as I'm playing them, it's like uh, it, it's e even the stuff that is that is totally like uncluttered synth pop or whatever that literally sounds like to me a voice and uh, three tracks of an instrument. I don't even know what they are. Um, sound great. They they just sound like mellow mellow pop songs that are timeless pop songs, right? And then. Uh, later in the album, it's literally fully immersed in a uh, roots rock world, right? Uh, which is great. I'm I'm to totally into it. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really cool to see uh, to see an album like this or two albums or whatever it is. Use your illusion one, tortured poets department two, whatever it's called. Anthology. Why, why is that word anthology in there? That's so weird. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, that's my review of the Taylor Swift album. It is an awesome album. Um, uh, in my, uh, in my obviously, <laughs> uh, ridiculous, uh, and, uh, I don't know a thing about Taylor Swift opinion, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, pretty, pretty cool. Um, that's it. Um, if you, um, if you, do you want me to give you a rating? I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it an eight out of 10. How's that? Um, you know, because honestly, I, as I was, as I was reacquainting myself with this record this morning, a little bit, I was hearing a few things that do remind me of today's pop. Um, but, uh, but not a lot. I mean, I, like I say, I, it's a pleasant surprise uh, that it, that, that this artist sounds like this. Um, like I, say, I have no idea what any of her old albums sound like. I've literally, like I say, obviously, this person never gets on the radio because I've never heard any of her songs before. Um, but uh, there you go. Uh, if you like this show, want to support uh, future episodes, um, you know, we've got lots and lots of uh, Contrarians episodes. We've got a Ko-Fi. We've got merch, all that stuff. Like and subscribe. Let, let, uh, let us know what you think about this Taylor Swift album. And um, we will have more shows, uh, you know, as I'm as I'm speaking here tonight, we've got our our regular, um, you know, it, we, we've every week, uh, more or less, we've done an album cover show and we've got another one coming up. Uh, what is tonight's called? Uh, they never looked worse because last time was they never looked better. Um, so this is uh, this is album covers, front, back, skate folds or whatever, where the band looks uh, really, really ridiculous. Um, so that's the one that's coming up tonight. But of course, uh, once this, well, maybe this will go up today. Who knows? Uh, anyways, there you go. Um, the new Taylor Swift album, The Tortured Poets Department. Go Bill. Go Bill.